Okay, everybody, we are live on another episode of Roads to Liberty. I am your host, Randall Parker Jr., and we have an amazing show for you today. Today is Friday, June 13th. It is the full moon. It is Friday the 13th, and we are here on a haunted, creepy-ass episode of Roads to Liberty with an amazing guest. We got Bloody the Brave here. Say hi, Bloody. What's going on, man? How you doing? Bloody the Brave. Mmm. See, yeah. we don't start out the show with any kind of corny guests or anything like that. Um, okay, let me give you a proper introduction. All right. I'll do my best. This guy, I, I can only honestly say, I've heard of your music probably the first time when I was getting to Ron Paul and everything because you have a pretty decent YouTube presence. And uh, I was uh, just stumbling across videos, and I guess because of keywords or whatever, I got to some videos of yours, and it was... Uh, it was a message, and it was a beat, and it was a track that I could get behind, and it was something cool, and uh, it was um, it was the right place, right time. But um, let me keep the keep the vibe going with that. So, what this gentleman does is he keeps the the truth, the message of the truth of liberty, of freedom, of property rights, of individual liberty, and he took that into a a musical monologue or a message or a journey that we could all kind of get behind and tap our feet to and put in our headphones instead of just listening to podcasts and speech all day long. This guy made some some awesome hip-hop music. And uh, tell me if I if I did you justice. <laughs> man, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. You did me great justice, man. Great justice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pleasure to be here. I'm down for the people. So anytime I get to hang out with the people, I'm, I'm in, man. Thank you. Dude, we're, we're super glad to have you on the program. Uh, just to, to check everybody, we got a couple viewers right now live. I'm not in the chat because when I go in the chat, it actually crashes my computer, so that's one thing I learned to avoid. <laughs> we got a cool show planned. We're going we're gonna to start out the show in the beginning uh, half of the show. We're going to talk about um, Mr. Brave here. And uh, Do you go by that full name as, as your title walking around, or do you go by your, your, pers- your first name? Uh, homies, homies and friends call me Blooded. Um, is Blood yeah. of the Brave. Full moniker, but blooded's fine. I'm full-blooded Irish. For those who didn't know, um, living in the states, these states, um, lucky to be here. Like everybody else, life's a gift. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, it's it's a blessing to be alive. I guess you could say, in a, in, a, in a corny Instagram meme kind of kind of sense. But at the same point in time, there's so much tyranny and there's so much injustice in the world that if it weren't for mouthpieces like yourself, and I guess myself now, now that I have this platform, we would be uh, we would be surrounded by more people in the dark. So I thank oh, yeah. you for, for, for making some noise with your music and letting people know that there the world isn't all, all sunshine and rainbows, unfortunately, and there's some there's some truths that have to be told, right? For sure, man. All we have are each other and each other's own individual voice and their own perspective on the world, and everyone can see what's going on in the world, so it's great to see people from all walks of life, you know, voicing their opinion and, and just caring about what's going on. Because it's it's right in everybody's face. Right, you know what it is? It's crazy because when when the wool's been pulled over your your eyes so so close, it isn't. It's in your face, but your, your blinders are on closer to your face. You know. Um, yeah. Which I want to get into all the political stuff in a second, but I want to just kind of start out with you as an artist and a musician. Um, blood, blood of the brave. What what is the um, inspiration for the name, and what is the meaning behind it? Uh, Blood of the Brave, I'm full-blooded Irish, like I said. Um, people might have known me or known me as full-blooded. That was my name for a while, full-blooded, because uh, I'm full-blooded Irish. But I got hit with some papers when I tried to uh, take this to the level it's at now and make it official, so I had to switch the name up. Um, there's an old-school MC still out there with that name, and I needed to separate myself. And it's for the brave. It's for the people who have the guts to take a stand, to walk out to that ledge, to the unknown, and everyone has that inside of them. So I try and, and make my music a message for everyone. I don't want to alienate anybody because all we got are each other. Um, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I've been blessed to know a lot of dope MCs and great people who are on the great path that I'm on. And I've teamed up with a lot of good people. And music is, spoke to me at a young age. My older brother was in a metal band for 15 years. This has just basically been my life, hip hop, since I was a kid. My mom and dad, thank God, never you know judged anybody and let us be who we wanted to be. 
like I said, my brother was in a metal band for 15 years at our house. So when I was doing what I was doing, no one judged me or had a problem with it. And I've just been obsessed with and living in the hip hop community for a long time. That's pretty unheard of to, to have anybody's parents let their kids do a metal band for 15 years. I don't, I don't even know about 15 minutes in some houses. <laughs> and then let alone a rapper in the uh, studio downstairs. So, no, they're really cool. We're all adopted. So that's why I'm full-blooded Irish. My older brother, who's in that band, is full-blooded German. My sister as well. And then my mom got a gift when um, we didn't even think it would happen. Um, she uh, she had my younger brother. And... Uh, that, that was just a gift to all of us. So three adopted kids and my younger brother, and I'm lucky to uh, be here, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think it definitely probably gave you an amazing perspective because with your one of the brother doing uh, you know, music in a different variety and then you doing music and having all that being accepted under one roof, I think that probably maybe speaks to part of your identity, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Possibly. For sure, man, for sure. And there was no... And it was great because we, growing up, we never wanted to leave anybody out, and we never judged anybody. And I have friends from all walks of life, and I still try and do that with my music, because really, man, it's it's on all of us. And I actually believe in people, unlike you know some, but I can see why they don't. But I do. I believe in people. I want to get into that, uh, the pessimistic versus the optimistic view. I personally try to stay optimistic as well, um, despite sometimes there's there's evidence to to feel otherwise. But um, I want to stick to the music sh stuff real quick, and then we're going to go right into the, the second half of the show. We're going to just be blitzing through all the, all the world conspiracies and stuff that's going on, and also just some of the intellectual fabrication stuff that, that creates the, the, um, the place in your mind that you're at where you, where you have to be reprogrammed at some point. Yeah, sounds um, good. So I want to just set you up as an artist as well, because... Would you say that music is the central thing in your life? Like, am I am I maybe I'm pushing that too much? Like, would you say that? No, really it, is. Thing you, it is. It is. Yeah. It's the it's the thing in my life. You can't. I can't do what I do without you know. And I'm I've been obsessed with music. My whole crew has been for a long time. We got in this because we loved hip hop. We were going to shows, freestyle, ciphers, battles a long time, and it's it's developed into a point where I can do it, and you know make it make it a craft to where everyone in the world can hear it. So I'm going to take it that serious, and I have for a long time. I've been on worldwide radio stations, the Sirius Satellite Radio, this last year. I got an album on iTunes, so, you know, it's, it is it is the central part of my life. It's what I do. It's who I am. Yeah, so I was going to say, I, I, I believe that from just checking out your music and just looking at you as an artist and saying, this cat, like, all of his social media pages aren't, like, anything but his music like I've, I I've, I do marketing and I've worked with artists that um, so I do I do some marketing with artists because I love music as well and that's a natural place for me to start but some artists can't separate their music from their personal life and it, it, it's too much of like oh it's my mom's birthday and I'm like yeah that's beautiful but that's not anything for your audience to really yeah grow yeah from. and Everybody I love my, mom with a birthday I love my and, audience in. I'll let him in. I'll let him in because you know. I mean, I'm a I'm I'm a public figure, so I'll let him in. But it, it's uh, the music is what I do, and and it's for for them. I'm lucky to share a relationship with so many people. I mean, including yourself through my music. Look look at look at you know we're hanging out in this technological age online face to face. It's amazing. It's great. It's incredible too. And I was gonna I was gonna mention that for the program today too. That it's it's weird how. Um, we spoke on chat a few times and we spoke earlier today to just test levels and everything and try to make sure we were cool. And uh, But we didn't do a lot of like, what are we going to talk about kind of stuff because I, I have a kind of show rundown that I, I want to go by. But I figure I just met this guy. I love his music. I love what he's doing. He's happy to be on the program. We're going to need at least an hour to get to know each other and to talk and BS. And that's, in, that's actually entertaining. When I'm watching other people do that, it's entertaining for me. So... Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. We get to know each other and and, uh, and share for the for the viewers, which is great. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so music is the most important thing to you. But when did you when did that hit you? I mean, most people say you know when I'm three years old when I was in diapers. Was it like early? Were you like falling out of the crib? Man, beats? yeah. Like I said, with my older brother and just the the expression that comes with music, like just the being expression. able to express <laughs> how you feel and and who you are. And it was great, but hip hop is what really got me because I was just hearing tales and stories about what I kind of felt inside. Like I always knew, 
and was kind of, you know, a rebel, but I knew something was going on in the world, and my mom and dad never sheltered us because we were adopted, and they took us to volunteer everywhere in the world, and I was hearing tales of, of life and people's struggles and people who want to do better, and that's what related to me about hip-hop was that aspect of it, because that was the original line that, you know, a lot of people know from hip-hop was broken glass everywhere, and it was like, you know, they were, you know, they were the narrator for what was going on around them. And that just hit me hard at a young age. So, who are the who are the main hip hop artists that that woke you up? Was it early stuff like N.W.A. or like yeah, the, I mean, it was, was it like Biggie and like Tupac and I was uh, obsessed with Kim Play and Heavy D and uh, Rakim and K.R.S. One, and then came the N.W.A. and I didn't really have a problem with it because I understood it was just. A little bit more aggressive, and I have always had. Maybe it's the Irish blood of me, but I've had a little bit of aggression in me. That that motivation, the will to compete, and so you know, it's um, it went from you know Rockin' to DMX to Nas to you know back to Chuck D and everybody else. And I want to I want to play on that for a second because I got a couple of viewers right now watching live, and I know I got some volunteers in the audience, and I wanna I wanna play with that because you used the word aggression, and that's a big touch point word on our on our. Uh, on our vocab list here in the Liberty yeah. Movement. And just like with music, you can easily um, take a theme or take a note or a sound and tweak it and play it in a different way, right? Right. The same thing is true with a word. So when we're talking about aggression, if we're talking about it in a debate, in a critical sense, I might be saying, okay, aggression is when you use force against someone without any initiation. So if I use force against you, but you initiated force first, that's not aggression because I'm just acting in self-defense. Correct. So, aggression is when someone starts something with you. That's aggression. Yep. For no reason. Yeah. Yes. And you have every right to defend yourself if someone does aggress upon you. It is part of um, an inherent ability of the golden rule and what we now maybe call the non-aggression principle that I fully support. Absolutely. And, and thank you for, for landing that plane for me. What I also want to say is that we can use the word aggression in different ways too. So, for example, I'm I'm from a sales background, and I can I can use the word aggressive in opposite ways in the same job in in the same 15 minutes. Uh, let me give you the example. I'm talking to my customer, and I say I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put a pretty aggressive set of figures out in front of you to consider. They're gonna go that maybe they don't know what I mean by aggressive, but in the context of the sentence, that sounds like I'm gonna put a pretty good deal in front of you for to look at, you know, something right. nice, good right. discount. Just like aggression for music, for me, it could be like motivation. I'm yeah. going to motivate you through some passion and energy. Right. So, so it's like it's like channeling it. And then I can go back up to my boss and say, hey, don't worry, I'm not going to lay down on this negotiation. I'm aggressive. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to go start shit with my customer and be rude to them and throw things at them. That just means that I'm going to use an aggressive approach, meaning I'm not going to be victimized, I'm not going to be reactionary, I'm going to be offensive. That's right, that's right, exactly. And and with and, and hip-hop music and rock and roll went through it too, there was a big hair era, and hip-hop had that for a long time, and I reference this guy a lot, but he brought passion back to it, but it was DMX. I mean, people missed it in hip-hop forever, and he came around and they were like, what is this? This is raw passion, you could say, aggressive and some of his lyrics were, but you could actually feel it because he brought it to you. Right, and I think because it was really actually self-defense, if you think about it, this might be the like aha moment in a way because think about it, these people were victims, I mean not every single one of them, I'm sure some of these kids had a nice house, a nice upbringing, but most of them were growing up in the hood, they were victims of pretty tough upbringings, pretty tough neighborhoods, and their music was their striking back. There was their mark they're going to leave on the world. Some people use graffiti. Some people would rob a bank. But their way was to use the microphone and to get a beat and to make people go, I like what I'm hearing. And then in, this, in the background, I'm actually thinking and I'm actually learning and questioning my life and questioning my assumptions and changing as a person. Yeah, exactly. It's, powerful, you know. it's way more powerful. And, and music's been doing that for a long time. We don't know, but we can only imagine, and some people live through it, you know, in the 60s of rock and roll, that was their weapon, was music. In, in some countries, music sparked revolutions and changed the world, you know. It, it happens. And, and people, people, people feel it. 
it almost happened in this country uh, in the 60s and 70s, and I guess uh, people were aging at the same time as the DEA was cracking down on drug use and uh, a bunch of other political stuff. I'm not a political science uh, guru because I feel like that's their game, and if I study their game, then I'm basically just one of their like one of their uh, you know ro- uh, groupies. That's the word I'm looking for. I like that. Um, I like it. I yeah. like it. I'd yeah, history's be- important. History's important, but the political uh, science side of it, and people could study what they want, but I'm not going to study rulers fighting each other for power positions. That's just well, me. And that's the thing. I'm not saying that I'm ignorant. I'm not saying I don't know what the major wars of the world were. I'm not saying that I don't understand, um, you know, basic different political leaders, this one and that one. And this show will be a learning process for me and a learning process for everyone else. I think if you go and look at some someone's program, whether it's Stefan Molyneux or whether it's uh, Joe Rogan, you know, on their first episode versus 40 episodes or two years in, it's a whole new broadcast. It's a whole new host. It's a whole new platform and format, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. It takes time, man. I mean, like I told people when I first started rapping, I, I was a battle rapper. So I, I was I went from riding and freestyling into competitions for battle rapping before A Mile. I was battle rapping. We had competitions all around the Midwest. But I tell people I'd set my alarm, my timer for four hours a day, and I trained because you can hear the difference from when I did it then in 2001 to now. And it just it takes time and work, and you could definitely tell. But that work is what it's all about. People who are willing to put in the work for what they love. Yeah, and and speaking of which, I want to give a shout out to Michael Shanklin again because I'm gonna probably shout him out probably every show for the first like I don't know a couple of years I have this. But you talk about dedication, you talk about going and doing the extra work. <coughs> Excuse me, Mr. Shanklin put this network together that you're on right now, Voluntary Virtues, that we're all enjoying. Um, he had one show, and he said, I'm going to expand this and, and invite 50 to 100 people or 200 people, as, as many as we can fit under this tent. Um, and uh, so it's pretty awesome. Like you said, you can take your passion. You can, you know, just like a microphone, you could just amplify it out into the world and, and start to reach more people like we're all doing, you know? Yeah, heck yeah, heck yeah. And salute to him for making this happen, and it's happening everywhere. People are giving platforms to people's voices everywhere. Right. It's pretty crazy too because I start to look at Google as almost like part of the part of the mothership, part of the dark star. But they always had that saying at their company uh, that went, "Don't be evil." And now they're doing some stuff to fight back against the government. Um, supposedly, you know, doing stuff to fight back against the government, prying into your data and giving you more means to keep your data secure. I know Facebook has been pushing back even harder, which is cool because you don't really see that from the big name companies. But I think the businesses of the world realize that. The days of actually using the government to be part of their bully, bullying stick, are now starting to run over. And now the businesses kind of want to just have a fair deal with their customers. They don't want to be taxed. They don't want to be regulated. They just want they want their products to stand for themselves, and they want their customers to be able to decide and not be bullied into buying a product or not buying a product. You know? Yeah, and even if they took money from the feds to start or for this or for that, now they're starting to think twice and saying. You know, nothing really is free. If I take something from them, they'll hold it over me, and they'll make me comply with, you know, what they're doing that actually harms my business, whether it's tapping into all my customers' chats or tracking everything that they don't want. And people are starting to separate themselves from that and listening to the people businesses are, especially. It's great. Right, right. So, like, when did you realize, at what age did it occur to you that you were being lied to in a pretty fundamental way, that, like, something was really off from what, like... Man, my, it... I don't know. My mom says when I was 12, I just woke up one day, and she saw a look on my face she had never seen. And she says it wasn't puberty. She just said who I really was finally came out because they always knew. And it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a bad way. They just knew this, this guy always wanted to question everything. But it was fine because I... I trusted the people I love, but personally for me and my crew, I got a group of friends who are brothers, and we're still brothers and we always will be, but it was all of us through after, especially high school, because we realized we didn't really learn anything. We knew we weren't learning anything to make money, to be you know, independent. It was just all jargon, and it was right after about that when 9-11 happened, and it was basically almost the day after 9-11. We all met up. We grew up in the G.I. Joe era, and we were like, well, this is it. I mean, we're supposed to go to war now, right? And and they said the next day, everybody go back to work. And we said, wait a minute. 
go back to work. This this is what we're going to do. And, um, you know, none of us bought it. And we just started from there, and it's it's been a long ride. But thankfully, I, I was around other people, you know, who never judged me for questioning because I did. I have friends who didn't believe in any of the things I was saying for seven years, and now they're on the forefront of, um, you know, other movements. It's, it's great. <laughs> Right. I, I think the, the thing that's kind of get, getting people kind of excited is that there's so many more ways to have your voice heard and to make a difference and an impact than voting. Like, we had this system. Talk about ancient technology. I was talking to my, my dad the other day about this because he was asking me about my, my, my podcast and my shows and stuff. And I was trying to point out to him that, like, everything else we do in the world, we use the current technology. Molyneux points this out all the time. Stuff on Molyneux. Everything we do in the world, like, we don't see anybody getting out of a, a cab with a 1987 cell phone like, hey, bro, what's up, man? Yeah. Oh, let me just call. I got a flash. I can't see who it is, but let me just see who it is. Like, no one uses technology from 30 years ago, but we're using the social apparatus that we designed 300 years ago. Why, why would we do that? That makes no sense. We have a better feedback cycle built now. We have the Internet. We have ways to communicate with everyone on a rapid, everyday basis and ask them what their preferences are. Yeah, if so, we're advancing in every way of life, to make life easier, I don't know why we hang on to the same old ancient way of ruling, and you know, don't at least try something else. Because, for example, in Egypt, let's have a revolution, okay? All right. Well, what are you going to do right after the revolution? Replace it with the same thing you had—a government. That that's exactly. not going to solve the problem. It, right. Replacing it with the same thing. It's time for everyone to you know give something else a try, which would be you know enabling each other and people and see what happens because we don't know what it would be like because we've never had it. It's been it's been a long time and probably never have the people actually been in charge of their own existence. It's cool though because um, it's happening now. People actually people people know anything's possible and um, if we don't try we'll never know and it's time to you know put your faith in your fellow man and not some guy with uh, who's going to act on force in the name of the state. Yeah, yeah, and I want to riff on that too because like every we're, we're about to go into an, another election cycle, you know what I mean, in, in a few months or whatever. I mean, we're in it, but I don't really care. Like when I say we, I don't even mean, I mean the colloquial we. I mean the we in the sense of <clears throat> all the status, everybody in the country, the fur, the fury, the, the, t the TV news cycles, the commercial breaks, where you, this one's on the trail, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care, but we're not going to be able to avoid it before long. It's, it's yeah. a, a tidal wave. It's going to rush over us, right? Yeah. So what I want to remind people before we get sucked up in the fact that maybe, oh, Rand Paul or this one or that one is going to save our butts, it ain't going to happen, first of all. Second of all, you can vote right now with your dollar. You can vote right now with your feet. You can move out of the tyrannical state that you live in and find a better part of America if you love America so much. Go to Wyoming. Go to... New Mexico, go to Arizona, find a place that, that lets you be a little more free. And yep. vote, with vote with your dollar. Every day we vote with uh, who we interact with, how we interact with them. People need to support who they believe are making the right decisions. They need to support them. It's really all you got. If you want to see a change, you got to support those type of people who you agree with or who are trying things to make the world a better place. Absolutely, a thousand percent. So I want to talk about the point of the show because we're hitting about the halfway point and we're going to get into some more like kind of concrete topics and stuff in um, you know current events in the world and maybe some, some educational things that people may not know about. But I want to set up the show. Again, it's Roads to Liberty. Um, we are on the Voluntary Virtues Network, which is uh, the brainchild of Michael Shanklin. And um, you can find that network on YouTube forward slash Voluntary Virtues. You can find... Um, a lot of the content from this show at RoadsToLiberty.com. You can find this show uh, on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Roads to Liberty with all the um, show guests that are upcoming and any uh, show notes and links and copies to, to previous episodes will be up there as well. We also have a sponsor on this program. It's called Calling Vault. Okay? If any of you guys know what Google Voice does, it's a similar idea to that. It has a small membership cost to it yearly, but you can add a second phone number to your phone right now. It's completely... Uh, I don't say completely stealth. It's not encrypted, but it's stealth in the sense that this, they don't keep logs and they don't have. They're so small time, so it's like a burner phone, but it's connected to your phone. So if you do a side business or if you have you want an extra phone line because you moved, 
for, for I think it's 40 bucks a year, you can get a second line and a bunch of texts and a bunch of minutes and get rocking and rolling. That's callingwealth.com. We appreciate their support of this program. Um, going into the second par uh, part of the uh, show right now, I want to reset up my guest. We got um, Blood of the Brave. Say hi. What's up, man? What's going on? Hello, world. You are important, and you are in charge of your own life. This, cute, this guy is so cool. Dude, I got to have you on my show probably like at least a few times a year, bro. You got to commit to that. I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. Let, let's, let's, uh, let some people know how important they are. Where, so where are you based out of? Where does your music take place? Are you touring right now? Or are you doing local shows? What's your deal? I'm in Indianapolis, uh, Indiana. Everybody can check me out at bloodofthebrave.com. Uh, from there, you can link to all my free music, the music to support, and my YouTube channel. Um, I'm in Indy. Haven't hit the road just yet. I do shows around here. Um, down with my crew, Strong Roots Records. Everybody check them out. We all are like a collective of MCs that, and beat makers that, you know, are down for each other. And we just actually dropped our um, our uh, label sampler volume two today. You got to check out Strong Roots. Any of my websites will have them with them. But um, we're doing a festival here next month in in, in Indiana, which is going to be awesome. But I hope to get out on the road sometime and see everybody's lovely face and uplift the people with my music. It'll happen, man. The, the, the type of music you have, I feel like the message is, is got to be heard. It's got to be spread. Um, and I listen to, I'll probably say, like five of your songs. And I'm not a fronting type of person. Be like, yeah, man, I'm your biggest fan, blah. No. A mutual friend of mine told me about you, and I was like, oh, I've seen that kid before. Like, I've seen his, his videos before. That's and awesome. A few more. And I'm like, yep, he's definitely a good fit for the program, so we're going to try to get him. And you were, like, eager as heck to come right on, so it was awesome. Yeah, I appreciate any opportunity that, you know, someone would offer for me to reach more people and to talk about good things, you know, that you don't hear on the mainstream media. So thank you. Where can they get that new sampler that you talked about from your label? Uh, can they, can get get that that at, uh, they can get the new Strong Roots sampler at Strong Roots uh, on Twitter or Strong Roots Bandcamp. My new EP, Born to Rebel, is an 80s-inspired EP. You can get that on bloodofthebrave.com. It's free download. I just released some cassette tapes that I'm shipping out to the world to celebrate the 80s style of my new EP, which, you know, features a bunch of classic 80s songs that I rap over. As a marketing guy, I love that, man. That's classic. And actually, a lot of labels still put out cassettes. That's a little-known fact. A lot of labels are still putting out cassettes as a collector item. If you're willing to buy the vinyl and you're willing to buy the CD and you're willing to buy the T-shirt and you want to spend more money because you love the artist, you're going to buy the corny little cassette and put it on your shelf. You That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't fit any better with anything other than 80s-inspired EB because I'm rapping over Don Henley. I'm rapping over uh, Peter Gabriel. I'm rapping over Everybody Wants to Rule the World, Tears for Fears. So it's perfect for it. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so I kind of I, I pitched my sponsors. I pitched Mike Shanklin. We let you do your plugs. Um, the point of this show, Road to Liberty, is to detail the path that everyone takes, okay? You might be in my audience right now watching this program going, I don't know what he's talking about. You're probably on the beginning of the road. You probably just got out of your car or got in your car and pulled onto the on-ramp of the highway, and you're starting to travel down the road. That's great. Stay in your car. Don't jump out while it's moving. Follow safety rules, and you're going to get to the destination you're trying to go to. Some people are almost there. or some. It, it's not really a destination as much as it's a journey, but some people have been on the road for so long that they've kind of almost seen all the twists and turns it has. They've been up and down the road and back, and they're still looking for more clues and more information. So this show is about that process. It's about taking people from where they're in the cave, the platonic cave with the blindfolders on, where, they, where they're staring at the fire, to where they come out and they see the, the sky and the stars and they realize how big the world is and they realize how ignorant they were in that cave and how blind they were to the world. And instead of being afraid and going back in and painting on the wall like they, and say that they might be inspired, they go out into the world and they paint all over the world and they make music and they make a craft. So... That's what the show's about. It's about inspiring you to take what you learn on the road and take it out there into the world. Inspire others to be free, uh, non-aggressive, and, and voluntarist individuals in their life. I love it. It's a great message. Cool, man. I, yeah, I want to I make sure I plug the show every time, too. And so, it's great, though, but that's what life is. I mean, they hold us back through so many, you know, people just want to fear everything. There's so many things to fear, but fear itself is what everyone is kept in a cage by it. and it's an invisible cage and they can't see but it's time that they start trusting in each other and their own self and going for it because no one's gonna hold you back except yourself and you'd be surprised how many people will help you along the way if you 
take those steps on your own. People are attracted to that. They like it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's it, it's super empowering when you recognize in your life that you're actually the one driving the boat. You're actually the one steering the ship, and you're the one that can affect great success for yourself or terrible failure. And if you're really smart, you can take your ter terrible failures and turn them into even bigger successes by finding the the one thing that caused you to fail. By fixing that, your success engine will go on overdrive because that was like the stick in the gear. That's so right. You get open minded, and you see that a failure is an opportunity. The whole world starts to really blossom as just one beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep, it's amazing. And you don't find out what was clogging the gear until you go out and risk it and find those mistakes and fail. Because right. as I was saying in the promo for my music video, go and get it, you never fail if you never quit. You don't. You will not fail if you just keep going. It won't it won't happen. There's no such thing as failure if you are consistently going after it. It's not gonna happen. Let's do a check. Um, it's 8.32 p.m. on the east coast of, Amer uh, of the uh, occupied states of America. And I want to check and see with our guest, um, Mr. Blood, is there anything you can think of in human relations that has to be aggressive or violent? Or do you, can, you, can you think of an action that needs to have been taken or historically or today? One action that... We, we need to do this one violent thing where we, we aggress upon people and we don't give them a choice. Like, What, what would that be for you? I, I, I don't see a reason unless someone has aggressed upon you and put yourself in danger. I don't see how any aggression is justified unless someone has put you or your loved ones in danger. So, so we have Blood of the Brave here uh, verifying that at least between him and myself, volunteerism is still the proper way to conduct oneself. It's the moral way to be, right? Yep. On the same page? Yes, sir. Good. Okay, so I don't know about the chat, but you guys can leave your, your, your responses. Hopefully you're all volunteerist, and if not, you're, you're Googling volunteerism and finding out what it means to not be aggressive and to not initiate aggression on people, whether it be property or person or, um, well, property and person pretty much covers it. And, property and pretty much covers it. Peace is more profitable. For everybody, it's cheaper. Yeah, win-win-win solution, win-win negotiation. Um, what, when you can find out what works best for both parties involved, and there's no loser in the in the arrangement, you create more utility and you create more equity uh, in the in the world. You know, that's how you have savings and wealth is because the beautiful things are made and they're not destroyed. In, in war and in government, we create and we destroy, and we create and we destroy. And the purpose of the creation is so that we have some thing to destroy so that we can hire people to destroy as well and we're just paying for a cycle of meaningless destruction and creation bombs and blowing yep. up buildings in other countries and then paying com companies to go over there and rebuild those com countries we're stuck yeah. in a cycle it's vicious and repeats but it ain't over yet there is a chance for peace is that a line bro you dropping you dropping a verse on me yeah, man. I mean, they're everywhere. Yeah, that's uh, me and uh, Richard Cook. He produced my album, 1984. It's available for free download. His tag at Twitter is at Worm Music. But me and Richard Cook have about five songs that are coming out that should shock the world, and um, everyone will love them. This dude is a highly talented producer that I'm lucky to work with. That's awesome. I'm excited. I want to be on the first, like email list for when that comes out or if it comes out early I want to see and hear it but um, where when is that gonna drop do you know do you have a date uh, we're gonna drop them over the slew of the next couple months before um, my, my next album comes out but like I said born to rebel is out and 1984 is out people can download them for free at blood of the brave com dude I love it I love how you promote yourself and it's not you should not oh this is something I'm gonna drive home on so many of my shows is you should not be shameful about promoting yourself or your project you should not be shameful about promoting your brand no. uh, you should definitely not be ashamed of getting a sponsor for your project for your podcast for your show I don't care if you're audio only I don't care if you're a rapper musician uh, a basket weaver go into a business say I'm gonna weave you a basket with the logo on your of your business and I'll make 200 of them for 500 bucks and they go sure get to work or a thousand or whatever I don't know what you need but Go you support each other prosperous. that way. That's how you. That's how you make it happen. Go out there and be prosperous. Go out there and take what you want, and not in, an, in a theft type way. Don't mistake what I'm saying. Take what you want, and that the opportunity to have whatever you want is pre present as long as you're willing to do something in exchange. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we have to do what we can to counter those who control and manipulate what we work so hard for, which is the money, you know, since it's <laughs> controlled and regulated by people no one elected and don't even know who they are, a.k.a. the Federal Reserve, the two most powerful words in the English language, people need to know what those mean. But we got to do what we can to counter that, and that's to support each other with sponsorship, volunteerism, all that. Federal Reserve was actually one of the one of the buzzwords on my list I wanted to touch on today, and also just the future of money, because I'm a big, big Bitcoin enthusiast, and I want to touch on that. But we're going to skip forward, so we're going to bring that now, because I don't want to go to it later. I want to come to that right now. With regards to um, like the Federal Reserve, I think most of the audience knows what that is, so I don't have to really crack that down too much, but we could spend a whole episode on that. Um, what I want to say, and then I want to hear your thoughts, is that as a Bitcoin enthusiast, I feel like money is something that it's... I know there's the uh, Austrian sense of money where it has to be a most saleable good and it has to you know, be um, fungible and this and that and the other thing. That's great. That's good textbook material. That's good, uh, you know, scholarly material. But what money has to be more than anything is it has to be mutually agreed upon by all parties that it's that it's got a store of value. You know, I'm not gonna make a million pens and say, oh, the new currency is pens, and then give them all out to everyone and then be like, ha, ah, no, we just want to write with them. Like, it makes money is what it is for what for a reason. The fact that money is a sheet of paper with a bunch of dead uh, white people's faces on it right now should tell you that how could that, that doesn't have any intrinsic value. You're holding a sheet of paper. We worry about Bitcoin. We worry about Bitcoin collapsing in value. Let me ask you a question. What would prevent the Federal Reserve from saying tomorrow, um, all the dollars you have are worth one-tenth of what they were worth yesterday. Just put a decimal place on the side. They can do that. That's the law. They've done that before. And if they make the law, it's the law, and they'll back it up with a gun. Every single law is backed by a gun, and I'm glad you said that. Every yep. single law is a recommendation with the promise of aggression, if you don't, don't agree. Yeah, yesterday was Throwback Thursday, so I put up a uh, picture on my Facebook of a silver certificate from 1935 to oh, show man. people you cannot, your new money, you cannot trade in for anything. It's a, it's a promissory note, an IOU, but these old dollar bills, you might have been able to trade in for something with you know value, gold or silver. Yeah. I gotta correct you there. The one you posted, that silver note, yeah. was um, in a in a in a more legitimate sense, in my opinion, and, and I think in an Austrian sense, real money. Um, in that it was redeemable. Um, right, 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 where, right. Where, I think maybe it was what you're trying to say, but whereas money today is not a promise. note. I don't know if you were just saying it a different way, but money today is not redeemable for horse shit. There's nothing other than what you can buy with money. Of course, it's redeemable for that. I'm saying, government-wise, banking-wise. The lowest common denominator is the U.S. dollar. You don't go to the bank and say, "All right, I'd like to turn my dollars in for gold or silver." They go go to a pawn shop. I don't know. We don't have yep. that here. That's right. And you know. and and the, and the crux of that matter is people don't know on their money now a Federal Reserve note. They don't even know. A lot of people don't. Maybe people tuning in, but I'm going to share this with the world. And some people don't know that the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with government. They're as federal as Federal Express. And that they are the ones who dictate what your blood, sweat, and tears are worth. And they say this is what it is. And, and that right there is enough to galvanize humanity to look twice and think twice about what it is we're doing and living for. And that's what we need to do is make people aware of what they're living in, which is a scam, a manipulated scam. And that's not cool. Right. It's and not I, fair. I won't put up with it. Yeah, no, I, I love your passion. And I think what happened is that the state or the apparatus will will push and push and push and push until they get to a point where they go, if we can get this one, if we can get them to buy this this load of garbage, then they'll buy anything pretty much. We know we have free money. And I feel like the Fed was one of those things. In 1913, they went to Jekyll oh, – and if I'm doing the wrong year, I'm sorry, but I believe it was 1913. When they went to Jekyll Island and they basically hijacked uh, the U.S – federal economy at that point in time, all the gold in Fort Knox, and privatized it to to individuals who we don't know their names, we don't know what percentage is owned by whom, uh, and that's the organization that's responsible for printing our, 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 so to speak, U.S. money supply that we have to be paid in. We have to, you know, I can't start a business and decide to pay my customers in uh, wampum or, you know, Big Macs. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, no. And, and, and uh, I encourage people to look up Blood of the Brave Banksters. It's a music video I made, Banksters, Blood of the Brave, and it details this whole thing. And I talk about it all, and it, it, it speaks for itself. But basically it is they own your reality and control your salary. That's what they do. And Banksters are gangsters. That's what I'm yelling. That's what they I are. I, you know what? Some people might take that to offense, and I, I almost do in a sense. But you know what? Banking is something that... A lot of free market people think is not evil because it just, it, the, for example, I know that the banks in, in, in the world today are evil and corrupted, but that's because they are melded in with the state. They're fascistic. But they're not the, an a, a bank in, in theory doesn't have to be an evil thing. If, if it right. was like a credit union or something where the parties had some sort of control over their assets and it wasn't a shell game. Right, right. Would you agree? Yeah, it, totally. And like yeah, I and said, I mean it's some of the stuff we've never seen before. So when people ask, you know, you, you, we just we haven't been we haven't been set free near as much as what people think. No, if anything, I feel that you know the, the quality of living has gotten better for for an individual, for for a single family, for the average family in America, or for in the industrial world versus a hundred years ago versus two hundred years ago and back. So in that sense, we are more free. We are more free to be free of pain and to live longer and to be free of hunger and to be free of boredom. But we're not free from oppression. We're not free from financial tyranny. We're not free from um, moral and ideological aggression against um, our young, against our children. Right now, in most parts of the country, it's illegal to keep your own flesh and blood human child home with you for their entire life. You have to ask permission from the state to to not have to send them somewhere. Yep, and it, and it's uh it's unfortunate. I, I don't blame people or humanity for the simple fact that at age five we're all sent off and we all get educated by the same people who are dropping bombs on villages without nobody's approval. So I don't right. blame people. I I will not do it. I will blame the system that indoctrinates us all, and um, I I can't buy into the to the divide and conquer or the hate. I'm here to kill hate with love. Yeah, I, I like the positive message, man. I want to keep it that way as well. The only thing I would say is that, like, I I, I don't hate the people at all. I just I get frustrated with the people, and I, I want to shake them sometimes. Like, I want to go up to them and smack them or, like, splash some cold water on their face because it's like you're sitting there watching the TV. Like, the last election cycle for me, I could barely even, like, see it out of the corner of my eye. It was so revolting to me. But to yeah. watch Romney and to watch Obama Obama pretend that they were different people on stage for an hour was hilarious. Like I'm like, well, I think we should try to defend our nation and support the troops. Well, I think we should support the troops and defend the nation. Like, yeah. you said the same thing backwards, bro. Like, do you want to just be vice president and president and we could just call this thing a day and we don't have to do an election, we could save a couple billion dollars? The, me the media, the propaganda machine is is – powerful so it's gonna take time and those TVs are in everyone houses they have four in each house so any little slice we can get in is is worth more than anyone could think it, it really matters like for instance you had an old white man sit up in front of 65 million people at a debate to be president and he said so if I legalize drugs you all are gonna go out and do it and just by that statement alone the whole crowd shut up and was like he's right I'm not going to go out and do it and that's one thing I'm big on is the war on drugs because I'm in hip hop and I see these communities and everyone has something to do and something to say about all these kids getting shot up. But not one community leader is going to ever mention the war on drugs, what these kids are killing each other for. If they legalized it, you would not have Chirac. You wouldn't have a war in New Orleans in 1994. People don't know how just how nasty it really is in some of these places. But it's because of the war on drugs and the state working hand in hand with all of it. And I'm not, super, my bad. I'm sorry, dude. No, I'm just saying they're not there to help. They're not coming to help. They're there to regulate and uh, do what they think is best because they know what's best, the state. Well, if they didn't know what was best, what the hell could we be doing picking them to run our lives? I mean, certainly we don't know what's best, but but, but obviously since we vote, we, we know good enough to pick the people that should run our lives, and then they know best. You know, this is a logical way to do things, certainly, right? No. Nah. 
not not logical at all to give someone else you know the permission to say what we should be doing with our lives it's 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 very insane in a way that we are just to trust a few men with all the power in the world well, blooded after this podcast I'm gonna make myself some popcorn and I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside for a walk is that okay with you hey man you do what you want to do as long as you're not harming anyone else but if I if I go and make myself some popcorn and go for a walk couldn't that somehow harm you uh no not me you can't think not of a me. way where me me making myself something to eat and going for a walk might harm you no I can't what if I decide to smoke a joint while I'm out there on that walk hey it's your body do what you want with it but couldn't that be harmful for society somehow, Blood? Couldn't that hurt society if I got high out there on my walk while I was eating popcorn? Couldn't that damage society? No, not 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 really at all, no. I guess not, right? Right. I mean it's 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 pretty insane that, you know, they encourage the whole world to go drink and get in fights at bars, but to do something that makes you peaceful is illegal and they'll shoot you and take your kids over it. But that's the world we live in. But you know what's really cool though, is that we have these awesome cops that if you if you uh you know, try to like sell a couple, you know, grams of, of plant like substance or whatever to help put some food on the on the table for your family because the economy's so terrible and you get caught doing that. We got this great system where men with badges and, and guns and tasers will come and, and throw people like that into a cage and keep them there for like years and years away from their family and charge other people like a hundred and five thousand a year, I think is the average cost for a prisoner uh, to be detained in, in the country. So we could take the guy off the street that's making thirty thousand dollars providing for his family barely and put him in a hole in a cage and then we could all pay a hundred thousand dollars to let that guy eat for the year to teach him a lesson. That's a, a genius way to keep things going, right? So backwards. It's so backwards. It's it's actually insane. It is. It's it's that backwards. And people need to realize you can't hold those accountable. These people are can't be held accountable because they investigate themselves. We can't do it. We're, the police are not going to ever be held accountable because they investigate themselves. It's not going to happen. They're going to keep doing what they want. It's getting sad. I got there was a point where I couldn't watch the mainstream news anymore, like a year or two ago, and I was like, it's 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 pitiful that they're trying to pass this off as actual information or as actual. Like, there was a day and time I'd imagine where you would go pick up a newspaper and it would be for the people to to learn something, to maybe learn something. But it's probably a rag the whole time. It's probably a propaganda rag of the state since the first printing press was ever made. But it, it, it just blows my mind that, that people are so far in the dark. Even in the Internet now, I was going to say, when you were talking about uh, your, your last point with regards to the aggression we see in the world, I noticed that, like, cops, like, are, are, not, are getting away with everything. Like, I, I, it, it, it's on Facebook. It's on Twitter. It's like, that's the kind of stuff you can't avoid. It's like when people used to stand by the side of the road with pictures of, like, aborted fetuses and stuff to make their point about uh, abortion, that's aggression in a sense, borderline aggression almost, because it's like that's something that is pretty har pretty harsh on the eyeballs, you know, makes yeah. you feel shitty and have a bad day. And you can't avoid it, though. It's you everywhere. You don't have a political position. You don't want to have a political position on that. You're not condoning nor... Uh, uh, preventing abortion, you know what I mean? But right. with, the, with the internet, you got people posting because they're trying to get the word out, and they're doing it for the right reason, and I want them to post, but they're posting stories about how a cop tased a 13-year-old kid, or how a cop, uh, you know, three cops beat a, a, an elderly man who was having a seizure to his death. Like, I know that I subscribe to a lot of news feeds that are looking for the dirtiest of the dirt, but the fact that there's more than one or two things like that a year happening in America... People got to look at themselves and look at their neighbors and say, "Who are the cops in my town? What are the what are the records? And should I go picket town hall and say, I want this guy's badge? He's beating people left to right in the street. He, he's he's done this. He's done that. This guy shouldn't be running on the streets anymore. He's the criminal. Take him off the streets. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, even with the kids, um, I had an instance with my nieces and nephews the other day where I told them something had happened. I said, if that happens again, you whip out your phone because all of them have them, and you hit record. And you tell them, I'm putting you on camera. And it's the same way as I've educated them to record any form of authority because they'll take advantage of them, and they don't have the right to do that. Only their parents do. You film the police, shout out to Cop Block. Um, you empower yourself. Film, you know, film. That's what we need transparency. It's not, it's not aggressive or bad intentions. We're just looking for transparency in this world, and technology enables that. And that's what a camera can do. And a, a group like Cop Block you know, 
promotes that, and I support them. I I make music about that. I got a music video, Silent Moves, that you know it's just, it, it hits right at that. I I display how you know you need to film the police, especially right from the get go, to hold them accountable because it's real hard to do. It's real hard to hold a cop accountable. You're saying? No, oh, yeah, any government official, you can't hold them accountable when they investigate themselves. That's you what people need to understand that we're not in charge. You don't need to hold the government account, uh, official accountable because they, when 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 push comes to shove, when it's when it's something they they're supposed to be accountable for, it's not them that they are. They're they're oh, I'm just a representative of the people. But when they do something great, oh, well, thank God you have Obama as president. Oh, thank God you had Clinton because we got this done here. Clinton passed it through. No, same, they're they're like a shitty girlfriend or a shitty boyfriend. When something goes wrong, it's all your fault. When something goes right, it's all t thanks to them. Good point. Very good point. And two sides, same coin. I don't like to use Bush's name or Obama's name. I replace them both with government because they're both doing the same thing, just in different variations. You're right. You're right. If I say Bush one time too many and Obama one time too less in my insults, someone's gonna think that I'm, you know, a secret liberal or or, or something, and and that I have it out for the right. And I I'm not on the right and I'm not on the left. I'm not in the front. And I'm not in the back. And I'm not in the center. I am off the spectrum, and I'm in my own domain. That's awesome. I don't need your permission, man. You know what I mean? Yep. And I think everyone is there inside. They, you know, they just have been told or misled, and they watch that box to watch their favorite game. And after their favorite game, the media came on, and they've been guided to where they're at now. And people like me and you and millions of others are there to remind them of who, what they really think inside, because they don't really think what that box is telling them to think. They don't really think that way. Dude, I like having you on my show. I'm going to have you back a bunch of times because what people need is people need to kind of get this rah-rah stuff sometimes. I think a lot of people that told me they've been listening and watching my show so far, they, they've they made some compliments and some, some some nice, you know, said some kind things. I appreciate that. I'm not looking at the camera 100% all the time. I didn't comb my hair today. I didn't uh, put on a fancy collared shirt because I don't want the viewers to get, get it twisted. This isn't about making me look fancy. This isn't about making me get uh, a job at a major news network one day or something like that. This is about me helping people like you who've been holding a microphone for years now get the voice out there a little bit louder and a little bit further spread. I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. It means a lot. And um, I've got friends and family and fans who are tuned in and you know I'll share this with everyone, but we got to support you know broadcasts like this because this is the real media. The only way people really get to hear some real information. It's great, man. Thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, man. We uh we certainly loved having you today. It's about eight fifty four. I'm gonna shout out a couple more things, and I'm gonna give you the parting thought. We got uh, Chuck Forward, the Liberty Geek, coming on at nine p.m. tonight, which is next. I'm gonna be a guest on the panelist in that show. Uh, I'm gonna tell tell what I think about crypto anarchy and how that could be part of the solution, or maybe the entire solution for taking down the aggressive apparatus of the state and re uh, reinstalling a humane and voluntarist apparatus of a free market and uh, free association society. So I'm going to be touching on that. We're going to have a roundtable discussion, and you are currently listening to the Voluntary Virtues Network. We are live with Blood of the Brave, and we had an awesome hour. We're going to definitely get this guy back. What are your parting thoughts, man? What do you want to tell people? What What's your view for the rest of this year? What, what do you want people to be thinking about right now? I want people to hopefully never give up on each other and never doubt themselves and basically overall don't buy into the doubt and the hate and just tune them out. It's you know life's short. We're lucky to be here. It's time to appreciate what we got. The now is what matters and people matter and they've got all the tools they need to succeed without someone else giving them the permission to. Stop asking for permission and start being your amazing self. And I'm Blood of the Brave, bloodofthebrave.com. Hit me up. I'm down with any and everyone who's down with me. I appreciate you for having me on the show. It's been great, man. All right, dude. I couldn't have said any better myself. And with, with that being said, I'm going to save everything else of beautiful, delicious content that we're going to spill out of our brains for the next time we meet, which will probably be a few weeks from now. Hopefully, we'll get you back soon. That'd be uh, great, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. My name's Randall Parker for Blood of the Brave, for Voluntary Virtues. You're watching Roads to Liberty. We're going to tune on out. Hit us next week, Friday nights, 8 p.m. Stay tuned.